Hello again everybody, it's Nathan Wilson, Driving Dreams Restorations here in Central Florida. I wanted to take a quick video of this Mel Lincoln 430. Um, about to go back into this 64 Lincoln. And I always do videos uh, for myself uh, just to remind me, you know, where everything goes, where all the brackets go. Um, I'm pretty familiar with them, but it always helps. So I figured this video would help some people uh, who may be doing their own rebuild or maybe just changing a certain part and they're like, damn, where did this bracket go or where did this certain bolt go or how did this go back on? So uh, I'll do a little walk around of it um, and maybe it'll help somebody. Um, I guess I'll go through a few things like the AC compressor. A lot of people ask, how does that go on um, or how does it come off? You know, I see people, you know, on the forums and stuff asking. Um, so there's another bracket that goes, and yeah, I'm using my little magnet as a pointer. Probably a bad idea because it's going to stick to stuff. Luckily, I did uh, stainless steel bolts on almost everything, so um, it won't stick to that. But there's a bracket that goes across here, but obviously I'm using the motor mount. I mean, I'm using that point to uh, lift the motor, so it's not on there yet. But uh, you would loosen those, and then the four bolts, this is where it kind of gets a little tricky. Um, there's four bolts on the bottom here that you would have to take off to take the compressor off. The one that's way back there, you'll notice I didn't put it back in. That's for, you know, maybe hopefully 20, 30 years in the future and somebody's doing the compressor on this, they won't have to mess with that. It's, it's perfectly fine without it. I never put that one back on because I know the hassle that I go through uh, taking it off. Uh, these two bolts, this one and this big one back here are for adjusting it. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that big one is there. Uh, that's another one that I typically, I snug it down, but I don't make it super tight. Uh, that way the compressor will move with this one. It's not, um, in my experience, it, you know, there's so many other adjustment bolts on this um, to tighten down that it's not going to interfere with the compressor. And it's just going to make your life easier when you go to change a belt or something in the future. Um, so, I mean, you know, I'm sure... People be like, oh, you got to tighten that and then whatever, talk shit. But it is what it is. It's how I've been doing it for a long time, never had any issues. Just, you know, I think of the future user of the car, whether it's me or the next guy, um, you know, try to make things uh, as simple as possible. Uh, this power steering hose right here is notorious for leaking. So um, it's probably common. A lot of you guys are going to have this issue uh, and you're going to want to replace that hose kind of a bitch if you're doing it in the car it's a little difficult to get to um, but uh, one trick is to put this hose in some really hot water for a little bit first uh, and it'll make it a little more pliable slide it on one way and then slide it back the other way uh, make sure you try to put the uh, clamps if you're using this style where you can kind of get to them from underneath the car obviously if you got it facing up here you're just going to cause yourself more headaches later down the road if you ever have to work on it again obviously the power steering pump on these is really notorious for um, having issues so that's something you know you definitely want to rebuild uh, that's not too terribly difficult you take the the main crank pulley off and um, you just it's i think it's actually only two bolts holding it on to the uh, timing cover there so uh, and then I've got a video actually about rebuilding that that pump. Um, you can see we got the pretty stainless steel bolts on the oil pan. Um, I used grade eight, you know, wherever necessary, and then other places um, stainless steel just for looks. Um, the motor mounts, this, these can be tricky sometimes on a convertible. They have this extra plate uh, to move them forward a little bit. Um, they're kind of uh, can be difficult to find. They're, they're kind of expensive. Um, let's see, the exhaust manifolds. I try to put, this is actually a heat, uh, underneath this is a heat coating and then there's this high heat paint um, to try to battle the uh, notorious vapor lock that these uh, engines have in these motor compartments. Um, these nuts, they actually, they're lock nuts. You can get these to replace the original bolts, uh, the, the original uh, nuts were brass, and they're a real pain in the ass when you try to take them off if you ever had to do your manifold gaskets, which they, they're they really notorious for leaking. So uh, it's not an easy job, especially if you don't have a lift or any right tools. It's actually easier to just pull the motor out to do them. 
but you can get them off um, or at least get the gaskets on with it in the car it's just kind of a bitch uh, these brass nuts the ones that used to be there you may actually have to torch them off because they're brass and they they tend to you know they've been on there for 50 years and they tend to spin off so um, you can heat them up with a torch that's one trick i guess you could use heat them up with a torch just be careful you don't get too hot obviously and melt the stud but the stud is steel and uh, the brass will melt off and you get it just right um, these valve covers I'm proud of you have to uh, you know they're usually dented up and banged up and stuff and you know it's not like any other car like a Mustang you could just go and order valve covers for 20 bucks on eBay and they'd be chrome and, sh and shiny and pretty uh, you have to really do a lot of work on these so I've actually um, you know they're not perfect but I've uh, you actually use some uh, slick sand and a little bit of uh, plastic and Bondo and, and try to make them smooth. Um, people come by and they see me, you know, out here sanding on a valve cover. And they're like, what the hell are you doing, man? You're wasting your time. But you kind of have to do that on these if you want them to look good. Um, you know, you can't, you can't just go buy them. Uh, so um, let's see. The uh, spark plug wires, just pretty standard wires. This is my little zip tie trick that I've been doing forever. I think it really makes, you know, really cleans things up. Um, do you basically, I mean, you guys have probably seen it. You take a zip tie, you run one zip tie around all four of them, and then you run the smaller zip ties in between. And, you know, it really gives you a lot of flexibility as far as, you know, where you can put them. Um, so as far as the wires go on this car, that's about as clean as it gets. Um, it's kind of a strange setup, but, uh, that's about as clean as you can make it. Let's see the this is a um, uh, Water outlet from a 78 Dodge Challenger I believe uh, Because I don't want to have the big ugly reserve tank here because I did away with the fuel pump as well So trying to make the front of the motor a little cleaner setup um, So the, we probably we're gonna have the electric fans so I uh, won't have the fan on there either so it'll be nice and clean up here in the front, uh, aluminum radiator, all that good stuff. Uh, I'll make some videos about that stuff also. So in any way, to get rid of that reserve tank, um, I have a stainless steel one that's going to be on the fender, blah, blah, blah. I'll show you that later. Uh, but you have to replace this, and it's tricky because they you know, didn't have a, a water jacket like this before. It was part of that reserve tank. So I was able to find that uh, 78 Charger, I believe it was, or Challenger, um, actually fit there. So you see the thermostat in there. I use a 180 thermostat. Uh, originally had a 195. Um, I like the car to run a little bit cooler, which is fine. Once everything is rebuilt like this, um, it's going to run just fine. Some people would say keep the 195 in there. The motor was kind of meant to run really hot. Uh, that's just my personal preference. Um, you see the Protronics uh, coil here. Um, I just mounted it there because that seemed to be a nice place out of the way uh, it used to again be mounted over here underneath here kind of hard to get to but it's underneath that uh, reservoir which uh, we don't have anymore so um, you can do the pertronics uh, in here which I do have but I haven't put it on yet because um, those things tend to have issues sometimes straight out of the box they won't uh, work correctly and it can really make uh, diagnosing the, the engine when you first put it back in a pain in the ass so um, I try to keep as much stuff, um, you know, the same so that I can at least get it back in the car, get the thing to start again. Um, I know that it was running fine before we did the rebuild on it. So the distributor was working fine. Um, this is a new vacuum advance, which I would always recommend, you know, changing the vacuum advance on these things. Um, and then you can adjust the points in the vacuum advance and all that inside. You know, you can go by the manual. It walks you through that. These cars have excellent manuals. Um, thank goodness. Um, so once it's all running and everything, I'll take that back apart, put the Pertronics in there. Um, I'm 50, 50 on that, man. You know, um, I think the original style coil and the original points, if you replace them, you know, obviously if they're 50 years old, you know, they might start wearing out. You might have some issues, but if you replace them, it's about the same. It's actually, well, it's cheaper than doing all the Pertronics stuff. And you know, it worked for 50 years. Uh, so it'll probably work another 50 years, especially if everything is all rebuilt like this. So, um, you know, I'm a big fan of these motors. I'm a big fan of a lot of the original stuff that they put on them. Um, those fuel pumps, I mean, I, on this particular car, uh, I took the fuel pump off. 
Um, but the fuel pumps, if you get one rebuilt or you get a new one, they're pretty damn reliable, you know? So a lot of people, oh, I need an electric fuel pump, but um, that's not always the case. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm a fan of a lot of the older uh, original parts of these motors. You got to remember, I mean, okay, it may be having issues, you know, because the car's been sitting 10 years and then you buy it and you try to just go drive it down the road, you know, put some fresh gas in it and a new battery and go try to drive it and you start having these issues and you think, oh, you know, this damn, these points are, are shitty. I need electronic ignition. This fuel pump is shitty. It's going out. Uh, but you know, it's 50 years old and in a lot of cases it's been sitting for a while. So you got to take that into consideration. Um, you, you know, I have built several of these motors with all original parts, um, or, you know, back to original with the original fuel pump and the points and all that stuff. And, uh, they run just fine. Same with the Carter carburetor. You can put the original Carter carburetor on here. You can get it rebuilt for about 300 bucks. I believe I use a Daytona parts company. They do a really good job. And, you know, you probably never have any issues out of that carburetor the whole time you drive the car. Uh, but in this case, just happened to put the, uh, the Edelbrock uh, 1406 on here. It bolts right on. You do need that plate down there to make the extra height because you'll hit stuff back here. If you don't, um, it'll hit down here, I believe. Um, so you do need that plate. Um, and then the linkage here, um, this is just, I don't know. I've seen a lot of guys do a lot of different crazy things with linkage rods. Um, but I just thread the rod. This is the original rod here. And I'm trying not to move too fast and get everybody dizzy. But um, I thread it. And this is going to be a lock nut. I just threw this one on temporarily. But you thread the rod there, as you can see. And you put a lock nut on there. And I've had no issues so far with that. Um, and then you have... I put this original uh, vacuum source back on here just because it being down here, it's kind of nice and out of the way. And um, the only vacuum that I'll have on this car because I put electric door locks um, and uh, it's going to have vintage air. It's already in there and everything. Um, so it's the only vacuum is going to be to the brake booster, which a lot of times uh, the last couple builds we used a Hydra Boost. So... We didn't have that vacuum line either and the basically the only vacuum line was one to the distributor and one going down here to the transmission so in this car we'll have those two plus the brake booster and that'll be it uh, this is the uh, little vacuum modulator thing on the transmission uh, you can adjust it there's a little screw in there you can adjust to make it shift harder or softer so if you have a, a shifting issue that could be the cause um, and it's in the manual as well as how to adjust that uh, adjusting the bands is a good idea um, a lot of times they can get kind of out of adjustment you can see where we adjusted that um, so that's in the book as well there's a, a bolt there and a bolt there it's pretty simple uh, it's a little different than most cars so don't just think you know if you're a guy who knows cars think oh I know you just back it up uh, one and a half turns or three turns uh, one is one and a half and one is three I forget which is which but um, so definitely you know use the manual on that uh, the linkage, I'll take some pictures of how the linkage is all set up once it's in the car um, because that can be kind of confusing as well. There's some adjustment points um, for the kick down and the shift points and all that. Uh, these little bushings are an issue sometimes. Uh, people have sloppy shifter. Uh, I've done the videos on the steering column fix and the uh, rag joint and the bushings on the steering column. Those are uh, culprits quite often, but sometimes those bushings... There's a lot of them on both sides on the car as well. Let me see here. I'm trying not to move too fast. But um, where are these? There's some bushings down there. There's one right there. Um, so, uh, you know, you replace all the bushings and you can solve that problem a lot of times. Uh, let's see. What else? Uh, this is a an air hose. Um, this sometimes can cause some... Some issues there's a PCV valve in it so if that goes bad um, it can cause some some like vacuum issues and your car might not run right um, see obviously new freeze plugs all that stuff this was built back uh, we did we put the original cam in all that stuff um, and I'll, you know I'll do a burnout video or something when I get it done um, when it's rebuilt and it's running right and it's tuned right this is a uh, plenty of motor for these cars i'm a big fan of the original car uh, motors um you know i i've 
uh, we've done several swaps, um, but we normally do like the 460s. We like the bigger cubic inch motors. Not a fan of the Coyote swaps or the LS1s, and I know it take a lot of heat for that comment, but um, I just think 302 cubic inches is not enough to move these cars adequately. I know the numbers, blah, 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 horsepower, torque, whatever. Um, <laughs> but the you know the horsepower and the torque like on the coyote motor they're way up there in the uh, in the rpm range so and i've driven uh, uh a lincoln with a coyote motor swap in it and uh, it just felt like it didn't have enough power to get the car going it cruised nice but um you know it really was really revving up to get it moving down the road um and i believe that one had uh, a different rear end higher gears um, but just my opinion, I think the, uh, you need the big displacement, uh, for the low end torque, you know, low RPM torque to get these things rolling down the road. The 460 is my favorite swap uh, as far as if you're going to do a motor swap. Um, but anyway, getting sidetracked. So here's the alternator, one wire alternator replacement. That's a popular thing people want to try to do. Um, this is, I'll try to find part numbers and stuff for you guys. I, I guess um, might be a part number there. Maybe that'll help somebody. Nope, it says tested. But anyway, uh, the one wire alternator is great. All you do, uh, you have to change this pulley. It's pretty simple. Just take that bolt off, put your original pulley on there, and uh, that can solve a lot of issues. Do away with the voltage regulator. Uh, that's one of the things that I, I do like to change on these. Um, and let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, that's actually the original starter, but I do have a uh, different one that I'm putting in but like I said I just wanted to get it in and get it started um, flywheel bolts on uh, you know like I said did a lot of stainless steel bolts and things um, we use really heavy gauge wires here I kind of overdo a lot of stuff um, um, use a lot of two gauge instead of four gauge and I use all military spec wire um, let's see there's a couple other things I probably should have mentioned oh here we go this hose for instance, this is a real bitch, and uh, if you have a water leak, a lot of times this can be um, the source of it. Uh, this this just kind of wears over time, and the water wears out the inside of the hose, and you end up getting a leak. Uh, it's a bitch to change, but again, like the other power steering hose I was talking about, you soak it in hot water, uh, get it nice and hot, lube everything up real good, um, and just kind of muscle it on there, uh, slide it all the way one way, and then all the way back the other way. It should flex enough uh, if you get the right hose. And this is, by the way, a 7 8 hose. So if you try to use 3 quarters, you're going to have a hell of a time. It probably won't even go on uh, in 1 inch or anything like that. So one guy said it was 13 16 but I don't know. My experience, 7 8 hose works just fine. You can usually get it at O'Reilly or Napa. And again, uh, you know, make sure you put the, uh, the, the screws for the um, hose clamps in a, in a decent position where you can get to them. Um, Let's see what else. I guess that is about it. I'm sure I'm missing a million things and I'm gonna later say, damn, I should have, oh, well, let's see, the transmission mounts, those are a bitch to find uh, and they're pretty expensive. So, you know, uh, the, the uh, transmission filter, oh, forget about it, it's like $400. So, you know, when you go to take this apart, um, you know, do a little research first. If you watch this video, it'll help a lot. But, you know, first one I took apart, I just tossed the, uh, the transmission filter. And that was a, a big mistake. Because I'm thinking, you know, six bucks or something, eight bucks, get a new transmission filter. But uh, you're looking at three or four hundred dollars for a new one. It's insane. People actually rebuild them. It's crazy. But so maybe this will help. Uh, like I say, you guys putting something back together and you're like, oh, where was that bolt? You know, where did that go? Uh, that bracket. There's the... Uh, bolt for I believe it's 9 16 for the distributor uh, it really helps to have you know the special wrenches to go down in there uh, if you do replace your fuel pump either take the rod out or I tend to they'll kind of stick up in the top so they don't go back down and just wear down on that um, on that load with the cam um, I leave them in there because usually the car is going to someone else so if later down the road they want to change the fuel pump over or something they don't have to go find a rod um, so this is going to be changed as well. Um, I'll take some more videos once it's in the car of all the different hookups and uh, a little video of putting it in. I've got uh, probably literally hundreds of hours of the build on this car recorded. I just have not had time to put most of the videos up. And who knows when this one will actually get online. But 
Anyway, I hope it helps somebody out. As always, give me a call or an email if you guys have any questions about anything. And good luck with your Lincolns.